graphs of logarithm functions. Um, on the right hand side, you can see, remember, have a think about exponential functions, e to the power of x. We have horizontal x-axis, right? Horizontal axis at y equals to zero for e to the power of x. Okay, so for y equals to e to the power of x, we have um, horizontal asymptotes at y equals to zero. And if you find the inverse function of exponential e to the power of x, okay, inverse, we'll have y equals to log e x. Okay, so have a think about this. If on your original graph you have y equals to zero as one of your asymptotes, and you find the inverse of that function, what that asymptotes will become? x equals to zero, good. So you will have vertical asymptotes. Okay, you have vertical asymptotes. So on your original graph, e to the power of x, you have horizontal axis, and then you reflect that by the line y equals to x to have the logarithm function. Then that horizontal asymptotes will be reflected to a vertical asymptotes, which will become x equals to zero. Okay, so that's why on this graph, I, I, I don't think you can see this, but there's asymptotes at x equals to zero. Okay, there's asymptotes at x equals to zero. So that's why, also explains why there must be asymptotes. So we think about there's the asymptotes, first of all, because it's an inverse function. Exponential got asymptotes, then log will get asymptotes as well. The second thing we can think about is, for log e x, for log e x, this x, must be greater than zero. Remember that? Like that's the restriction we talk about. Okay, that's the restriction we talk about in the previous exercise. If I was to say this is a log, my base must be, okay, my base, this base must be A can belong to R plus except one. Okay, can be anything but not one, not anything positive but not one. And the number we put in the bracket must be positive. Okay, so in the bracket, this number must be positive because it's coming from the exponential y value. So for any exponential, the y value won't be less than zero. So therefore, we must have x greater than zero. That's also another reason why we have asymptotes at x equals to zero. Because zero is kind of the, well, you can't get zero, but that's the last restriction we have. So that's why we have like, something there, like to show, okay, I can't take zero, but we can go approaching to zero. Okay, so that's another reason why we have the vertical asymptotes. And now you can see the shape. For exponential is this shape. I'm not going to draw the asymptotes. For exponential is kind of this shape. And you can see if we draw y equals to x, that line, then we will have the reflected one this way. Okay, it's not very accurate, but like somehow like this. Okay, something reflected, like that purple one will be the log. Okay, that's the shape of a log. So that's how you remember the shape of a log. It looks different. Okay, it looks different for uh, compared to exponential, but like it's increasing function as well. Okay, let's have a look at the general equation for log. It's very similar to exponential. That's log, okay? We have A, we have lowercase a, that's the base, still the base. Okay, this A is still a reflection. This K is still a reflection. This plus C is up and down movement. Okay, up and down movement. The B is left or right movement. Okay, so translation is left to right. C is translation up or down. So let's have a look. Can anyone tell me what's the first step when you sketch exponential? The first step. I give you the first step. Asymptote. What's the asymptote? Uh, like for general equation, what's the asymptote? C. Okay, the constant C. Correct. 
So for this one, it's not that easy. Okay, for this one, it's not the C anymore. Okay, C is not the asymptotes anymore. So we need to find asymptotes at the first step. So step number one, asymptote. So a vertical one. So how do we find the vertical <coughs> asymptote? We will make the number you put in log equals to zero. Okay, we'll make that equals to zero. Anything in the bracket make that equals to zero. And then we solve for x. In this case, x will be b. Okay, x will be b. Then x equals to b will be your asymptote. Okay, will be your vertical asymptote. Show your example. For example, this one. We are trying to sketch log two x minus one. Okay, x two log uh, log two x minus one. So first of all, I will make x minus one equals to zero. Then x equals to one. So my vertical asymptotes will be x equals to one. Okay, my vertical asymptotes will be x equals to one. So what I can do is. So that's my first step. I'll have vertical asymptotes at x equals to 1. Okay, go backwards. Okay, who can remember what's the second step when we sketch for exponential? Or you can look back to your notes. What's the second step we talk about that time? What I want to do for the second step for exponential? Find a shape, like a starting shape. Okay, find a shape. Correct. So we still find a start graph. Okay, something to start with. We still have two graphs to start with. We still look at the base. So for the base in between 0 to 1 and for the base greater than 1. For the base in between 0 to 1, it will be on the right hand side of the asymptote, but it will be decreasing. But if it's a greater than 1, it will be increasing, but still on the right hand side. So both sides on the right hand side, one decreasing, one increasing. It's exactly the same as exponential, one increasing, one decreasing. They both above the, x -axis, uh, above the asymptotes. So this one is all on the left hand side of the asymptotes, but one increasing and one decreasing. Okay. What's number three we talk about that time? Yeah. Find k. Okay, find k value. Look at k value or like look at a value. So one of the k or a value. So we do k first. We see k value. So we don't care about what's the size of k value, but we talk about k is le uh, less than zero or greater than zero, positive or negative. Okay, do we have a positive k or do we have a negative k? So if we have a positive k, graph stay the same. Okay, the graph stay the same. But if we choose a k value less than zero, then we will okay, reflect in which way? In horizontal or vertical? K is changing X or changing Y? Combined with X, right? It's changing X. So if it's changing X, which direction is got reflected? Y, so vertical. Okay, reflect in vertical. So reflect vertically. So if it's here, then reflect to that side. So reflect to this side. So 4 will be the same. Look at A value. Okay, A less than 0, then that will be reflect in horizontal. So K greater than 0, the graph stay the same as the previous step. Okay, step number 3 and number 4, they can change. Okay, you can change the order for 3 and 4, but you... Uh, that's K, that's A. A less than zero, A greater than zero.
For exponential graph, do we always have x intercept or do we always have y intercept? For exponential, the previous one we learned. Y. Do we always have y, right? Then on our log, what we always have? X or y? X. So find x intercept. So always exist, okay? Definitely exist. Because always get y intercept. Uh, on exponential, then always have x intercept on the logarithm. So 6. If there is y intercept, find y intercept. Okay. If no y intercept, find another point. Or any point. Okay, just like exponential, I sub x value in. I find something and then I can just give another point on the graph. Can you see it's nothing different compared to sketch an exponential graph? I think only different thing is the first step you find vertical asymptotes. Like for exponential, it's straightforward. Y equals to C is the uh, horizontal asymptotes. But for this one, I need to do a little bit calculation linear solving to solve out what is the horizontal asymptotes and then sketch it. Then everything else will be the same compared to exponential graph. Okay, so let's do example. So six steps, okay? Give you 30 seconds to think about the six steps and then we go to sketch one graph at the back. And just have a think, six steps, what you're trying to do. Vertical asymptotes, choose a graph to start, look at the base, think about two reflections, y intercept always exists, we solve for that, and then if we can see x intercept, then we do x intercept. If not, we find another point. Okay, so let's have a look at the graph. Let's have a look at uh, example three. I'll do a hard one with you. Uh, let's look at four. I'll do this most difficult one with you together and then you can try the rest. Okay. So first of all, I need to think about, do we have, uh, what asymptotes do we have? So minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. Minus 2x equals to 3. x equals to minus 3 over 2. We have minus 3 over 2 about here. Okay, so we have x equals to minus 3 over 2. So we can't have inside B0, but at the zero point, we will have asymptotes. So we make the bracket equals to zero to solve for the asymptotes. That's the last point we can get, or the first point we can start with. And then the next step is choose a basic shape. And we can see our basic shape will be decreasing. Okay, will be decreasing. Because base is 0.3, less than 1. Okay, so lowercase a equals to 0.3. And then we have decreasing shape. Then we'll do reflection. Okay, we look at k values. Over k value equals to negative 2. Okay, it's less than 0. Which direction we reflect that? Y, right? Vertical. So in vertical. 
So we will have this tray. Go to next step. Over a value equals to negative 3 over 2. It needs to be reflected as well in the horizontal. Okay, if you think about horizontal reflection, see, like that's the shape. That's the shape. Horizontal reflection. Like that's the horizontal, then we reflect it. That's this shape. So we we'll have this shape here. It's a rough shape. So I know it's on the left hand side of the asymptote and it's a decreasing shape. It's like this. So I can see, well, I will definitely find x intercept. So my x intercept is when y equals to 0. So minus 3 over 2, log 0.3, minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. Then we can do log 0.3 minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. So the coefficient disappeared. And I need to change things to exponential. So that's 0 0.3 to the power of 0. And that's a 1. Minus 2x equals to 4 x equals to minus 2. Okay. Then we know x equals to minus 2 is our asymptote. Minus 2 is here, so that's minus 2 comma 0. Okay, I have a question. Now I, I can see I don't have y intercept. Can you see like I don't have y intercept? It's on the left hand side. So I need to find another point. Okay. Actually, you can find any point. You sub x equals to negative 3, negative 4, like anything. But your log won't be exact number. Like, you won't get a good number out. So, what number, like, what number you think you want to have here? Like, in, like overall, like, if I ask you to replace the red circle by something, what number you want to replace? 0 0.3, right? Why we put 0 0.3? That become 1. So y value will be something exact. So I'm aiming for make the red circle become 0 0.3. Well, 1 will be a good number because anything 1 will be log anything 1 is a 0. But we already use it. That's the y intercept. Uh, x intercept. So we already used it. So what we need to do is we make the red circle become 0.3. So that's something I can do. So 2x minus 3 equals to 0.3 is 3 over 10. And so that's 0.3. So minus 2x equals to 3 is 30 over 10 plus 3 over 10. So x equals to negative a half times 33 over 10. x equals to minus 33 over 20. That's about minus 1.65. Okay, so 
x is this value. So what y will equals to? For this x, y will be minus 3 over 2 log 0.3.3. So y will be minus 3 over 2. So y will be minus 3 over 2. So let's sketch this graph. Here. Okay, so I just find that good point. So that's a minus 33 over 20 and I have a minus 3 over 2 here. Okay, see my graph should look like this. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay, it's the same shape as I sketch here. That's my final shape. And I have labeled the two points on the graph. Okay, so that is a good graph. Which one? Yeah? Oh, it's not a specific point. Like, I just want this point because it's easy. Well, I can stop any point. For example, I can stop when x equals to negative 3. I can choose any point. Just choose anything and then let's see what will happen. y equals to negative 3 over 2. Log point 3. And then bracket, what we have, we have a 3 inside, uh, it's minus 2x minus 3. So that's a 6 minus 3, we have 3 here. But this number, I don't know what's the size of this. Like this is a point, this is a good point, but I don't know where to label this point. Like, what's, the, what's this, like approximately how large is that, I don't know. So that's why, it's a good point. I can still label this point, but it's just something not giving me much information. Like, what number will make my calculation easy is I can make this thing, okay, this, become 0 0.3. Because I know log 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is 1. And I know my y value will be minus 3 over 2. But what is the x if me that bracket equals to 0.3 and it's to calculate? After I get that, then I know what's my y value should be. No, but like you need to know where is it, like on the left or right of your actual point. You need to label it at the right place, approximately. Not exact, not say exact must be there, but like approximately on the right or on the left, it needs to be correct. Yeah. Okay, what's the domain for this question? How do you describe the domain? Two negative three over two exclusive. What's the range? R. Because for exponential domain is R, then for log you range must be R. They are inverse functions. Domain become range, range become domain. So the range for log is always R if there's no restrictions on the domain. Okay, if there's no restrictions on the domain, then the range will always be R. Okay, so you have 20 minutes left. I want you to sketch the other three graphs. Okay, the other three graphs. If you finish, if you have time, sketch the other two. Let's find the inverse. Sketch both exponential and log on the same set of axes. Um, but if, if you don't have time, we can do that tomorrow. Okay, we can do that tomorrow. But for today, I want to complete these three graphs. What? What? What's the thing? Oh, so no class?
Okay, then if no class for tomorrow, I want to do one one thing. Okay, I want to show one um, inverse function here. Uh, you know how to find inverse function, right? So for this one, for exponential, I will find inverse function. So I know x equals to 10 to y minus 1. Then x plus 1 equals to 10 to y. And then uh, 2y equals to log 10 x plus 1. Then y equals to a half log 10 x plus 1. And now what you need to do is sketch this one and sketch this one. They are two really easy graphs. Like you can sketch them. Okay, I believe you can sketch those two. But the thing is, you need to sketch it on the same set of axes. Your graph should really look like inverse. Okay, I marked year 12 paper and there's a question. Most of them did that question wrong because they picked the wrong side. You know the quadratic, you need to pick the left hand side or the right hand side. The positive or the negative for the square root. Most of them pick it wrong, like say half. And when they sketch the graph, they ask you to sketch fx and f inverse x on the same set of axes. You can see your working is not correct because one graph looks like this and the other one looks like this. They can't be inverse. Like you know you do something wrong. So when you sketch for inverse, it's the same thing. You need to see the graph is reflected by the line y equals to x. Your graph needs to show that. Otherwise, you will lose mark. Okay, I know you're trying to do inverse, but like your graph is not inverse. Hmm? This one? The swap x and y. You find it in inverse. Yeah, like you do inverse. Like you swap x and y, you find the inverse. You have two equations and you can sketch for them. I will upload the answers for you for these graphs. So if we don't have class tomorrow, what you need to do is complete three graphs above here, talk about the domain and range, and then do four graphs here, two, two, okay? Two exponential, two logarithms on the same set of axes and label everything clearly. So basically it's all sketching, okay? It's all sketching. I'll upload solution for you. Um, Friday, yeah, Friday. Yeah, so I upload things on Friday, not teaching on Friday. <laughs>